Let's talk about version two of my slide copier and the mistakes I made on version one, the improvements I'm going to make on version two, which are very significant, definitely worth the extra trouble. Let's start off with the choice of lens. On the first one, I was using a 1445 zoom with an extender and well, the edges of the, of the shots were very soft, which is another way of saying out of focus. Yeah, so uh, take that one out of the picture. That was not the best choice. What I found was my 45 millimeter lens. Now, if you're shooting full frame, this would be a 90 equivalent. This is a four thirds camera. And typically your flat field lenses will be a macro. So in this case, this is a macro. It's a fixed 45 and the camera is the same. It is set to a ratio of four by three. And we'll talk about that uh, a little bit later. I'll show you what I mean by that when we uh, go, go demo this. Okay. So uh, let's go through the steps. The first one is we need the correct lens and that makes a huge difference. The second thing is we're going to print out the plastics. Of course, I put these online. Um, there is a square tube and that is to block out light. There's this piece and what this piece is, this is one of the big improvements is we're now going to be able to print film. We're going to have a film holder. It slides through here. When we're not using the film holder, we need to block off this slot right there. And that's what this thing does. And then last and certainly not least is our actual holder and this holds the slide. So this side will hold the slide and we'll put it like this. And then the camera will shoot in this direction and this tube will help block out the light. So the camera shoots in here that keeps it dark and slide. And then on this side will be the light source. And then again, we'll go into more detail on that. And of course, then there is the film holder. And this is something I bought offline. I'll put the specs on here, but the film holder goes in there like that and you just load it up, you fire it off, move it to the next position, fire it, keep going like that. So that's how that works. Back to the steps. Okay. The next step is to get yourself a board and we need to mount the camera. So what I've done here is this is the wing nut off of an old tripod. You can use a bolt as long as it's the correct size for your camera mount screw, which is that hole right there. And if you use a bolt and you don't uh, insert it, you'll probably have to put rubber feet on there to prevent it from scratching stuff up. You say, what is this cut out for? Well, on my camera, that is for the battery and for the S S or SD card, not SSD SD card. And so I can remove that without unmounting the camera. So you just simply put your bolt there again. You can go fancy and recess it like I did, or just uh, straight up have the bolt in there. Then let me put the camera on here and show you the next step, which is where we start measuring. Uh, you say, how big a piece of board do I need? And that will depend on your lens and your camera. So yes, let me tell you what I mean by that right now. With this lens and this camera, I can focus out to about this point. So I've printed this out. I put my slide on here, held that in place. And then I move this back and forth like this until the slide filled the full sensor on the camera. You don't want it like to, to crop the slide and you don't want it to leave a margin around the slide because then you're not getting the maximum resolution out of the slide and your camera. So you balance it like this and you definitely want to make sure it's square this way. And the center of the slide needs to be at the center of the lens. Now, if you've got a, if you've got the same kind of setup I have, Okay. Uh, then you can just print this straight up and use it. If you're using a bigger camera, you'll probably have to shim this upward like that. So put something underneath there, but you want to ensure that the center of the slide is at the center of the lens and that will give you, well, 
if you don't do that, you'll get soft results. Okay. So I've done that and I marked the board where the front edge of this is. And then I tried the same thing doing the film to make sure it was the same. And I have to say it is not because if you look at these carefully, the slide, the area of the slide and the area of the film are not the same. So I'm getting a little bit of cropping on the film, but it's not too bad. It's acceptable. It's like a millimeter around the outside on two of the sides. Okay. But yeah, I've deemed that acceptable. And then what I did is I marked the holes. So I drew the line across here where it was, where it was uh, correct distance this way. I ensured it was the correct distance this way. And you can do that with the slide and then the center point of your lens. So yes, yeah, so you just turn on your camera and make sure that's the, the center point of the focus is at the center point of the slide. And then I drilled the holes and we'll put the screws in there and I'll speed this part up so you don't have to suffer through it. Okay, there we are. And then of course, when we're shooting, we'll add this, add this on here. There we go. And maybe add a little bit of tape to keep any light from leaking in the crack along here, or uh, one can just glue that on there if you choose. Okay, so this is the setup. Uh, we're gonna have to supply lighting and that'll be the next step, but that, that is just uh, pretty much the end of it. We'll go demo this. We'll set up that light. We'll put in some samples. We'll shoot them. And uh, yeah, you can see that this really works. Here we have our setup. Uh, this is our light. I'll zoom in here a little bit tighter on this piece as soon as I finish explaining about the light. Normally, this light would be a big, a very large a studio type LED light set far away. And the reason we want it set far away is because you do not want the pattern of the LEDs or any inconsistencies of the light showing up as the background for your slides or your film. So what I typically do is I will set this light about two meters away and then I will use a large aperture so I get a shallow depth of field. And a lot of people questioned that last time. They said, I thought you wanted a very long depth of field. No, because if you have a long depth of field, you're going to pick up any strange patterns in your lighting. You'll, you'll pick up individual LEDs or any, any kind of, you know, where it, it's lighter or darker. So by having a shallow depth of field, your light background is blurred and you'll get a much, much more consistent background. Okay, so we have our slide in place. We have our picture here. Let me zoom in a little tighter on. There we go. And then we will just push the button. Then we would take our slide. We'd get a new slide, poke it in place, poke it. And that's, uh, that's how fast it goes. To change over to film, we just push this dark piece out of the way like that, put in our first negative, poke the button over here. Oh, it's totally blown out. I see. I'll have to, there we go. Like that. Push the next one in place. Whoops, not in, not in place. Like that. Push the next one. Fire. And like that. And that's all there is to it. And then you pull this out. You load up another uh, set of film, a uh, film strip and poke it back in there and just shoot it. And it's that fast. So once you have the camera all set up 
and your exposure and so on. You may have to fudge your exposure a little bit depending on the density of your negatives in your slides. But once you have the focus and all set up, it goes pretty quickly. Okay, well that was it for this DIY film and slide scanner. Hope you found that useful in your photographic endeavors.